Hey friends, it's Unicorn, and today I have here a big late summer book haul. Are you ready for autumn yet? I am not ready, but I am also not ready for anything. So here we are, and I have acquired quite a few books during the summer, so I have enough for a big book haul. On top of that, a lot of the books that I have here today are quite big, so I have a big book haul. I feel like big books tend to intrigue me a lot when I see them, but also they intimidated me a lot when I actually planning to read them. So they ended up causing storage problem on my bookshelves, but I don't think I'm the only one. Let me know down below if you are intrigued by big books or more like intimidated by them. And besides that, I also have some books that are not my usual genre. I kind of want to dive into more adventures in my reading genres and my reading taste. So without further Further ado, let's dive into them. The first book I got here is already a big one. It's Jonathan Strange and Mr. Noel by Susanna Clerk. I didn't realize that before I acquired this book that Susanna Clerk also wrote the book called Pure Nancy that won the Women's Prize for Fiction last year. So maybe I should start with that one. However, I have my eyes on both books for a very long time, but I didn't make the connection. And I think if I like this one, I'll just check the other one out after I read this. This is a historical fiction and also fantasy set in 1806 in England when England is beleaguered by the long war with Napoleon. In this world, magicians used to actively live in England, but at this point, they kind of faded away into the history. However, scholars were able to find one remains of magicians called Mr. Noel, and he used his power to raise women up from the dead and horrify the French. But at the same time, he is facing challenges from another magician called Jonathan Strange. I have heard good things about this book for a very long time, and I also heard that besides the fantasy setting, the historical aspect of this book is also amazing, and that is a very important part that interests me for this book because it won't be too far away from my comfort zone and I just want to try new things and it's so satisfying to hold a big book in your hand. The second book I got here is The Little House by Nakajima Kyoko, translated by Jinny Tablet Takimoli. And this is a book that I acquired for the month of Japan for the From and About Asia reading project, which is August this month. I am already a couple of chapters in and I really liked it. This is a historical fiction set in Japan. Japan before the Second World War focuses on this housemaid who's working for a middle-class family on the outskirts of Tokyo. And she likes to write and she published a book all about housekeeping, but after she retired, she kept a journal about everything that happened in this house. And everything in that journal looks fine, but a very dark and thrilling last chapter wasn't discovered before she died. So after the discovery of the last chapter, everything kind of turned upside down. Like I said, I'm not very far in yet, but I enjoyed it so far and I can't wait to continue. The third book I got here is the smallest one in this pile, and it's Notes on Nationalism by George Orwell. And this book is self-explanatory and there's not many to thing to add. This is Orwell's opinion on nationalism, which is a topic that I want to read and study about, and I am kind of scared about the word, but that's another subject. Anyhow, I got this one. Coming up next is another large book. It's 2666 by Roberto Bolaño. This is translated by Natasha Wimmer. This is a story of mythical mayhem. It has five parts and they are all linked by the varying degrees of unsolved murder of 300 poor, young, and mostly uneducated women in a fictional border town in Mexico. The story is chaotic and violent, but it has the beauty of disorder. Well, I know that because the book has been adapted into a play, and that was performed in Chicago's Goodman Theater in 2016, and I was lucky enough to see that on stage. Before the play adaptation, the book was already sensational when it came out into a Spanish novel and also translated into different languages, because I still remember the hype that Chinese community got when it was first translated into Chinese. The play remains one of my most remembered uh, stage performance. I can still picture the purposeful disorder of design of the stage, and after I watched it, it, um, the story remains with me like forever. I've always wanted to read the book and I think now it comes to the chance. Then I have 
half of a yellow sun by Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. Um, I have read her nonfiction, but I have never read her novels, which are equally praised with her nonfiction. So I've always wanted to try. And the other day, I was watching a video about historical fiction, and this book was mentioned, and I just got so hyped and get it right away. This is a historical fiction set in Nigeria in the 1960s. Uh, the story is centered around three people who, for one reason or another, are connected to with each other. The three people including a houseboy who is hired by a university's professor, a young woman who abandoned her privileged life to live with her lover, and the third one is a Englishman who is thrown to the sister of the young woman. With the Nigerian troop advanced, they had to run for their lives and their ideals and solidarity were severely tested. I mean, I heard you can't really go wrong with Shimamanda Ngozi Adichie's fiction novels and there are so many reviewers that I trust love this book, so I think I'll just start with this one. Following, I have Palomares by Gail Jones. This is another historical fiction and also a magical realism story set in the colonial Brazil. It talks about a black slave girl who came of age on Portuguese plantations and escaped to a fugitive slave settlement called Palomares. On her way to escape, she encountered different people including a mad luxographer who desperately wanted to escape from military service, and also a whole village of people who praise a god living in a nearby cave, and a medical woman who offers magic with a great price. I heard this book is a well balance of magical realism and history, so I'm really intrigued by it. I found myself reading a lot more magical realism this year, and I enjoyed them out, so that's the good thing of branching out with reading. And the next book I have here is Elena Knows by Claudia Pinheiro and translated by Francis Riedel. It's funny, because I thought I had this book for a very, very long time, and the other day I was looking for it, and I realized I never actually got it. So that's the reason I acquired it. I don't know why I thought I have it. Maybe I have some other books with the same publisher with the same designs. The story started from an investigation of the death of a girl called Rita, whose body was found in a bell tower in a church she used to attend. However, the investigation was quickly wrapped up without finding the murderer, uh, left only her sticky mother who is still determined to find out the culprit. The truth behind the murder and know the secrets of the characters and the hidden authoritarianism and the hypocrisy in our society. And then I have two books I want to read because of my upcoming trip. I'm going to Peru next month, so I figure I'll just uh, read something by Peruvian authors before I go to the country. So I picked up two books. The first I got is Blood of the Dawn by Claudia Salazar Jimenez, translated by Elizabeth Breyer. This book follows three women whose life intertwined and also got ripped apart during the time which is known as the Time of the Fear in Peruvian history. Because that was a time when the Shining Path militant insurgency was at its peak. This book retells the story through the voice of women. It says that it active the memory of pain, desire, and politics in a lucid and uh, brutal prose. The next book I got for Peru is called Sexual Goyes uh, by Gabriela Wiener and translated by Lucy Griffiths and Jennifer Adcock. Gabriela is a journalist who likes to put herself into different dangerous but experimental situations and she likes to explore the first-hand experiences. In her adventures, she discusses topics like immigration, maternity, ugliness, love, death, and a lot more. And this is a very eye-opening essay collection that Gabriela invited us to come together and experience human body and mind. I'm hoping to read these two books before my trip to Peru, so they will be on my September TBR, and they are both not long, so I think it's very doable. And before I move on to the books that are not my usual genre, I have another one I almost forgot here. It's Cold Enough for Snow by Jessica Howe. This is a story about a trip a couple of mother and daughter made came from different places in the world and meet in Tokyo. And on this trip, they talk about everything, the weather, the clothes, the objects, and family. But there's also uncertainties in their conversations, and we find out the real reason of this trip and journey uh, when reading this book. It says that this book makes us reflect on the fact that whether we're speaking the common languages with the loved ones, and whether we know their inner world. And now I still have five books to show you. Four of them are science fiction fantasies, so if you have been hanging around in this channel for some time, you may be surprised here. But this 
this is where life takes me. I, at this point, just want some escapism. So I just want to dive into like very long and never ending stories. The first two books are from the same duology. The first one is Parables of the Sword, and the second one is Parable of the Talents by Octavia E. Butler. The story is set in 2025 when the world is descending into madness and anarchy. The protagonist and her family lives in one of the safe neighborhoods that remains in on the outskirts of LA. Her dad is trying to lead the people to salvage the last culture that remains, and the protagonist herself suffers from hyper empathy. However, a fire destroyed their compound and her family died, so she is the only one who's alive and she needs to survive in danger. I heard a lot of comments about this series saying that although it's a science fiction of its time, it's highly relatable to our time right now. And we are three years from the stories happening, but it's kind of thrilling that a lot of things that was happening in this book kind of came true in our society. So many readers are kind of scared by the subject matter, but if you know anything about me, I like to read anything that is dark and heavy. So these books sounds like right at my alley. And also, I always wanted to explore the writings of Octavia E. Butler. I've heard so many amazing things about her. I actually have heard another book of hers called Kindred on my shelf, but that I haven't got to. Maybe I should get to that one first, but these books are currently most interest to me. Thinking about science fiction related to our time, I got another book that I feel like everyone has already read. It is Station Eleven by Emily Mandel. This book continued to be under the spotlight because the story was set when a pandemic hit the world and the civilization collapsed. And honestly, I don't know a lot of things beyond that because that is the only thing everybody is talking about when they're talking about this book. I have been meaning to read this book for a very long time, but I every time I see this book in the bookshop, I kind of talked myself out of it. I don't know why. I'm not very scared about the subject matter, but it just happens. And this time, when I pick up the book that I'm going to talk about next, I feel like it's time for me to also pick up this book. So I got it. Speaking of the book that I got with Station Eleven, it's actually the book that I went to the store for the other day. Are you ready? I got the Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. And yes, this is an epic fantasy. I haven't read one of these in um, forever, my entire lifetime. I don't know if Harry Potter can't, but yeah, that's the closest thing that I've read that I can think of when I think of a this book. But recently, I just really need some escapes them. And what is better than a epic fantasy that is a thousand pages long? But at the same time, please don't judge me. I actually know very little about this book. I know that Brenda Sanderson is the one author, maybe with Robin Hop, the two, one of the two authors that everybody loves and everybody is talking about. And you cannot go wrong with his writing, apparently. And the interesting thing is when I was checking out this book, the cashier got so excited and talks to me all about Brandon Sanderson. And when she learned that I haven't read any works from him, she said that uh, I don't need to worry because she is very good at writing on a schedule, which is a question that I actually never concerned from the books that I'm reading because none of them have like 10 book series. But apparently this is a question that a lot of fantasy readers is always worried about. And she eased me on that, although I wasn't really concerned, but it's very nice of her. And she apparently really loved Brenda Sanderson. So I feel like it's a good choice. Anyhow, he is great. His book is great. I didn't start with the Mistborn trilogy because I didn't like the edition in my bookstore. That's a very shallow reason, but I'll just go with that. I'm really honest here. And also, this is not the last big book in this haul. The last big book and also the last book I got in this haul is Ulysses by James Joyce. <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know if I would understand it, but I really, really want to see and test myself on that. And um, the only memory I got with this book is that one of my classmates in my high school was reading it during the breaks when, I, when we were in high school. I remember I admired her so much. <laughs> I'm still talking to her lately about Ulysses and how she was reading that. And she's like, yeah, I didn't understand. I was like, 
I don't blame you, but you tried. Now this time it's my turn to try. And that's all the books that I acquired during the summer. I feel like summer hasn't passed yet, but everybody is getting ready for autumn. I don't understand. The weather is still pretty hot here. Um, but yeah, please let me know any of your thoughts about these books. Have you heard of them? Have you read any of them? Please let me know. And don't forget to say hi in the comment section down below. Thumbs up to this video if you liked it. Until next time, happy reading, stay healthy and safe. Thank you.